That was the countdown of all time. All right, good Friday morning. Today's Friday, March 22nd, 2024, and this is your Friday Safety Meeting. I'm Dennis Davis. I work in the Safety Department here at Prime. With me, I've got John Harden, 21-year associate here at Prime. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? Doing fantastic. We do this 52 Fridays a year, and, you know, we've been doing this for well over 20 years. I remember one of the first things I did as an intern here was come and, and be a part of of this Friday morning, I think it was uh, old Dave White. He's floating around here somewhere, and it was old Don Lacey uh, doing these Friday morning. I mean, it's a little bit different back then, but you know there was no such thing as social media or anything like that. So we, we've we've evolved and we've come a long way. You know, we've come a long way from the days we used to publish this on. For I know we see some some young folks and we see some some not so young folks. We remember cassette tapes. See a few hands, and you know we also, of course. Most folks can still remember the, the CDs. We would send those out to specific truck stops and, and, and outside locations. We would produce these meetings on. Now it's all digital. Uh, we're live across the social, so Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and now Instagram. You can view these both live and, and sometime in the future. You can like and subscribe and get notifications anytime we go live on these. But, man, we've come such a long way from from what we used to be. And... You know, just to think that, you know, in five or ten years, uh, as technology again gets better and takes over, what this meeting will be like then. So I'm excited to see what what is in store for Prime Incorporated both today and in the future. But again, welcome to everybody that's joining us this Friday morning. Um, it's like we're missing some tables over here or something, but that's okay. Um, breakfast is free at each of our locations. Uh, so if you would, John Blanton and his team do a fantastic job of feeding us. So if you give those guys a round of applause at each of our locations. Thank you so much. Well, I've been promising to get him out here, but one of these Friday mornings, we're going to get John Blanton out here and talk to him a little bit. But he's always so busy that we can't steal him away, but that's okay. So uh, we are live, uh, again, across the socials, but we're also live simulcast in our outside locations, pitched in Pennsylvania and Salt Lake City. So let's go east first. Let's go to uh, Pittston, Pennsylvania. I think we got Rick Ifford and Richard Brock with us this morning. Good morning, guys. What do you have for us? Hey, good morning. How y'all doing down there? We're doing fantastic. What you got? You know, it's uh, everybody's hiding around here. They're uh, underneath the blankets, uh, all covered up. It's, you know, 19 degrees this morning when we came into work this morning. It's a little chilly uh, for spring anyways. A little chilly for spring, and that, but that's okay. You know, uh, this week, uh, spring equinox hit. We got the first full days of spring. You know, don't let that. That, that, that gets your mindset out of uh, uh, protecting yourself and making good decisions. There's still going to be inclement weather in various parts of the of the of the country. I think some folks, will, especially in the Midwest, will call this faux spring, you know, fake spring. You know, it, it'll be in the teens sometimes. We may even have a little bit of snow before the season's over with. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we're going to have some snow across the Midwest, uh, uh, upper Midwest, uh, Chicago area, out in that area. So, uh, if you're traveling in that area or heading that way, just uh, remember, uh, turn your jakes off, slow down, uh, increase that following distance, and uh, be aware of your surroundings. And if it gets that bad, just pull it off and park it. Awesome information as always. I think you got Richard Brock with you, with you this morning. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. You know, I want to take just a second and kind of talk about uh, service and, you know, what we're doing for our customers. It makes a difference. Every interaction that you guys have out there makes a huge difference. Remember, service is not just about being on time. Service is the way that you're treating the customer. It's, uh, it's the interactions that you're having and the relationships you're building. They're just as important as getting that load there on time. This morning, I want to take just a second and I want to introduce uh, Sean Kaziba. He's actually going to be taking over down at the training pad. Blake is going to be Blake Meredith, who's been up here and he's been working with me for about six years. He's going to be going back to Springfield, and he's going to be working in the training department there and, and helping out. But uh, I want to introduce Sean. Sean, good morning. Good morning, Richard. How are you doing? So, Sean, tell us a uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you came to Prime. How'd you how how'd you how long you been here, and where'd you start? So, I came to Prime in February of 21. I started as a driver, 
I drove for about a year and a half, moved down to the trading pad as an examiner, was there for about a year, moved to overnight safety claims and logs for about the past nine months, and now I'm back here going down to the trading pad. Awesome. And uh, for those of you that have met Sean in the training department, he does an awesome job, very very uh, smart guy and uh, did well in our safety department. So we asked him to come back and take over down there. Sean, you got any words of wisdom for anybody starting here today? I mean, just trust the process, guys. We're in it for you. We're here with you. We want your success. We, you know, we're all working together in this and just stick with the process. Trust everyone here and you'll be successful. Awesome. You know, if you, if you guys need anything, you'll see that the messages for uh, your for those of you that are instructors, if you're picking up a student, you'll start seeing those messages coming from Sean at this point. If you're getting a student from up in Pittston, which, by the way, if you're not an instructor, guys, remember uh, to qualifications to be a PSD instructor is two years minimum experience with at least 60 days as a lead seat and your accidents, logs and all those things are going to be reviewed by safety. If you want to be a TNT trainer, uh, I'm sorry, if you are a PSD instructor, you also have to have. I think I said that two years experience, but if you want to be a TNT trainer, you have to have six months over the road experience with at least 60 days as a lead seat at prime as well. And we still review that with safety and all those things as well. That's all I've got this morning. Thanks a lot, Dennis. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Of course, it's, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to jump on the mic. Oh, Sean Kazita, he, he ditched us for, for Greener Pastures, didn't no, he? No, he did. He did. You yeah. know, but, you know, Richard Brock stole a 10. You know, we always talk about 10s here at Prime, and we have a lot of 10s. You're looking at our own, John's a 10, you know, Dave White's a, a 10. These are, 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 are 10 out of 10 folks that do a fantastic job. These are long-term associates. They they start from the bottom, they work their way up, and, and Sean Kazid is just another example of, of one of those folks. So thank you, Sean. And, and as we talk about 10s, we go from one 10 to the next. We go out west. I think we got Tyler Patrick. Tyler, you're a 10 too. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Oh. We got a house full of tens out here this morning, guys. So I uh, appreciate the shout out, Dennis. Uh, happy to be working here at Prime. You know, it's been a long journey. I've been here the 14 years in November, started out in the shop, worked through Road Assist, and now out here working with our shop group in Salt Lake City. So guys, appreciate everything you do out there for us. Um, you know, we talked about safety a couple minutes ago and how, you know, spring's starting to come in. It's some nice weather out here this week. We do have a little precipitation coming in this weekend, but you know, one reminder, Safety and awareness doesn't stop at the exit ramp. You know, we got to take that same mentality of being aware of our surroundings, being aware of what's going on at our shippers, at our customers, at our receivers, inside the truck stops. You know, my road assist days, that's where all the accidents happen. You know, somebody's blindsiding in or, you know, you're pulling out, you don't see something. There's lots of various, you know, risks when we get off the interstate as well. So just as we're driving around the yards, make sure we have our flashers on, things of that nature. Make sure we're paying attention to yard speeds. If that's at our customers, at our yards here, you know, our driver advisory board had a lot of feedback in regards to our yard drivers uh, at the terminals, you know, making sure, hey, if we're supposed to be driving these speed limits and having our flashers on, we want to see the yard trucks doing that. So that's been a big focus through our shop group is making sure, you know, lights, cords are plugged into the trailers as we're driving around, being aware of our surroundings, making sure we're seen. So just some focus points, guys, as we navigate through the weekend, let's make sure we take that safety and awareness off the interstate and right back to these slower yards and terminals. So that's all I've got this morning, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you being here and thank you for everything you do. Awesome job, Tyler. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to jump on the microphone. Right back here, Spring from Missouri. Good morning, folks. How are you? We got a pretty hearty crowd here, and we're, we, we've got a jam-packed meeting for you today. So we're going to just come on and keep it rolling. You know, I do see a, a few uh, neon vests, and I see some, um, some uh, friendly faces, folks we've seen before. So... To our veteran drivers, I want to say appreciate you being here as always. Thank you for what you do. Welcome home. And, of course, that's at each of our locations. But, as always, we want you to get out of here and, and get producing revenue as quickly as you can. And for our, our, our folks in the Neon Vest, our new folks, sometimes sometimes there are some veterans in, in Neon, too. Uh, if you would, stay in each of our locations, our, our new drivers. Give us an opportunity to recognize you and, and properly welcome you to the team. Good morning and thank you. Go ahead, stand up. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Good deal, good deal. So, you know, we talk about neon best. You know, we got some some commentary this week from from uh, customers and drivers of our best. You want to talk about that for a second? I would. So, we, you know, we talk a lot about safety up here as far as driving down the roads, weather, 
you know, using your jakes, all that. So, you know, safety doesn't stop when the truck stops. And we sent it out on the weekly safety staple yesterday, talking about once you park the truck, you're out of the vehicle, you're at a customer, you're at a truck stop, wherever the case may be. It could be even here at a terminal or the other two terminals that are that are listening along here. But, you know, we encourage you to always wear your neon vest, your safety vest, whether it's yellow, neon, orange, pink, whatever the case may be. We would love to see you make that a habit every day that you get out of the vehicle, no matter where you're at. We want you to be visible. We want you to be safe. You're our most valuable asset. And that's what it's all about is your safety. And so, and Steve, maybe when you come up here later, you can kind of talk about what we're seeing on the customer side with Neon Vest as well. But, you know, some customers are starting to require that and, and maybe getting a few fines here and there for that uh, at certain places. So just please make that a, a priority, make that a, a habit. And we want you to be safe out there. You know, we'll take it just a little bit, take a step a little bit broader. You know, each and every time you go to one of our customers, every single driver, you are our on-site representative. You're the best sales associate that we have, best safety associate that we have showing up at that customer. So, you know, and there's no regulations that, that, that says you have to wear a specific type of footwear. We know that. We've talked about it. There's no regulations about, you know, what you have to wear while you're driving. But what, what, what we ask is that the same way Steve Wucky would ask one of his sales guys that he's sending out on the sales call to visit a customer, we, he wants them to, to look and present a certain way. And we'll ask the same of each and every one of our drivers. We want you to look and present a certain way. We want you to have that vest on. We want you to, to be respectful, be agreeable. If there is a challenge or, or, or an issue with the customer, you know, uh, be the ones that, that solve the problem, not the one that escalated. So uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do. We're going we're gonna to keep it rolling because we're jam-packed and we got started a little bit late. So what do we got on the safety front this morning? All right. Inspection-wise, last week we had 124 total inspections. 85 of those were clean, so we had a 69% pass rate. Give yourselves a round of applause. Great job. Once again, you guys are up there every week near that 70% mark. A couple of things that we do want to point out. Uh, we did see a couple of speeding citations coming through and a couple of seatbelt violations coming through. So, you know, these are the ones that we talk about week after week after week that we feel are low-hanging fruit that we can avoid. And, you know, these things come with a penalty. These comes with monetary you know, penalty against you guys. We don't want you out there spending your hard-earned money on a citation you, you shouldn't be getting. And then the other thing I'm going to mention is the IFTA stickers. We've seen more of these coming through here in the last two weeks. So I think last week I was out, but but IFTA stickers were mentioned. And, you know, if you see somebody out there without an updated IFTA sticker, sticker say something to them. And, you know, we kind of got a little feedback that, hey, you know, I don't want anybody telling me, you know, about my business. Well, these, these fines, you know, Low end start around two hundred and fifty dollars, and last year we saw them go all the way up, you know, over eight hundred dollars. So, you know, they're not doing this to tattle on you; they're doing it to save you money. So, you know, think of it that way. If there's anybody here that doesn't have the updated IFTA sticker on their tractor now, I think Sean, right over here with his hand up, has some right over here you can get. So, if you don't have one before you leave the yard, get it switched out, scrape the other one off, put that one on, and you'll be good to go. You know, before you before you move right along, and I know I said we got to keep it moving. You know, I don't cuss a lot. I, I, sometimes, you know, they still working on me. But every, but it it just seems to when I do cuss, it's because I look at a uh, uh, a failed inspection based on a handheld device, and it just chaps my rear every single time that I see it. You know, this is again kind of like the seatbelt, kind of like the if the sticker. It's such low hanging fruit such low-hanging fruit you guys know that it's wrong you know that you're not supposed to do it yet we still get two three four week folks that and these are the folks that get caught and i'm talking about talking to folks that that didn't get caught that that we just get pictures of you driving down the road you know we get motorist complaints uh from from your fellow folks out on the road that were you know doing whatever we're doing on on handheld devices and i'm just you know, the same plea that we, we give all the time, please just stop. Please just stop. It's so dangerous. You know, no matter how good of a driver you think you are, you can't do the Magic Johnson of driving, the no-look driving. It's just not a good idea. It's dangerous. It's illegal. Please, please stop so John doesn't have to listen to me cuss. So, Yes, send hate mail like yesterday. So Send hate mail like yesterday. Day yesterday in the safety <laughs> department. So well, we're going to move on to Stephanie Ewing. She's also in our safety department. And Stephanie... 
handles our hazmat endorsements. So we're going to bring her up to talk about hazmat this morning. So as you hand off that microphone, I'll give a, a, a little shout out. You know, we've got a few former drivers in the safety department. Rick Hitford and Piston is one of them. Dave White, believe it or not, uh, you know, a couple centuries ago used to, to drive a big truck. But we've only got one uh, million-mile driver in our safety department, and it's Stephanie Eaton. So give her, give her a round of applause. Not only that, today's a special day. Today's Stephanie's birthday. So as a, as a gift to Stephanie, we made her come up here and speak at the Friday morning meeting. So good morning, Stephanie. Tell us what you got. Good morning. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about taking your hazmat research test. Um, if you have the Prime app, you can do it on the app. <clears throat> if you would prefer to do it on paper, we do have paper tests. They are in lineup in Springfield. We also have them in the safety department. If you need the study guide, that is also in the safety department, along with the hazmat book that you would need to for the UN numbers and stuff like that. If you want to do it on the Prime app, <clears throat> you can go to My Prime in the top right corner in the three lines, click that, go down to classes and training, scroll down until you see the hazmat research, uh, click the link, and it's 25 questions. You have to get a 65% in order to pass. Uh, once you pass, I'll get an email and get everything updated for you from there. If you see that it isn't updated on your app, that um, you see like notes on it or you don't see a date that it's been updated, give me a call. Uh, sometimes mistyping your driver code or your truck number, uh, I won't get an email and it'll just show up blank and I don't know who did the test. So give me a call and that way I can get it updated for you manually. Um, hazmat endorsements. I don't want to talk too much about this, but uh, hazmat endorsements, we can do everything for you. So either Stan Kastricke or myself will log into a website, punch in all your information, you'll get a text message or an email. That will send you the test. You have to take the test. Once we put in your information, we have 24 hours to take the test uh, for Stan and I to go into another website, put in more information, and then um, go to the DMV, get fingerprinted, and pay the fee for your hazmat endorsement. If that's something that you want to look into, please give either Stan or me a call. I have business cards on on me if you want my direct office line, and that way I can help you guys get set up. Yeah. Can the TWIC office do the... Uh the background check for the hazmat or how do we get that taken care of? We do everything for you. So when I log in. Mm -hmm. So they cannot do the background check on the TWIC, but um, over at the IWX terminal, yeah. there's actually a hazmat where you can do all the. Uh, so. And we, there's certain places, uh, I don't know exact all locations in the country, um, but there's certain, yeah, there's certain locations that'll do uh, the fingerprint and everything for you. Uh, I can definitely work on getting locations. Uh, I know Stan can Stan can help you out too. Anything else? Cool. All right. Thank you, Stephanie, and of course, happy birthday. You know, Charles asked a question about um, uh, the fingerprinting, basically, in the background check of Twic. You know, believe it or not, you know, when you do the hazmat, when you do the TSA, when you do the Twic. That's basically the exact same fingerprinting and background check these time. There's some uh, industry organizations that are really pushing and making some headway on getting it to be just one and it gets you everything. So I know you probably read industry journals like we do. You know, there's an article out this week that, that talks about it. So I appreciate you, you, you bringing that up. So, all right, what do we got next? All right, we're going to bring Susan up with our law department. Susan's going to talk about some on-duty requirements. So Susan, come on up. You know, we better... Better just say happy birthday to Richard Brock, too, since today's his birthday as well. So, all right, happy birthday, Richard and Piston. All right, good morning, Susan. It's not your birthday, is it? It's not my birthday. All right, all right, good deal, good deal. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a few reminders about on duty requirements. Um, any work related activities that you do, you have to show on duty for those, such as fueling your truck and trailer checking in at all customers, uh, which include handling the bill of ladings, backing into the docks, opening the doors, removing any load blocks, drop and hook trailers. If you're dropping a trailer or picking up a trailer, you need to show some on-duty time. 
DOT roadside inspections, make sure you're on duty the whole time the officer is with you. Accidents you need to show on duty. Vehicle inspections for each drive shift, you need to show your vehicle inspection on duty. And flatbed drivers need to show some on duty for load securement, tarping, untarping. And tankers, if you're connecting the hoses or supervising the pump, you need to show some on-duty time for that. Um, when we were on paper logs, everything was 15-minute increments. Now we're on the ELD mandate. You need to log the time that you actually perform the task. And um, I wanted to bring up something about inspections. This week we had three log inspections. Two were for no paper log book, and the other one was for not certifying logs daily. So make sure you have a paper log book and make sure you're certifying your logs once a day. So you're saying we have basically essentially had a clean week on logs. We just just those low hanging fruit, a little bit of low hanging fruit, right. kind of like the, the seat belts and seat the belts. cell phones and exactly. the, if the stickers, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of, you know, uh, I had an old football coach who used to say, I have found the enemy. It is us, <laughs> exactly. you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemy and, you know, uh, uh, by and large, so many of us get it right, and we do it right probably 90% of the time. But, you know, uh, us safety professionals, we probably wouldn't have a job if everybody was perfect, right? That's right. So that's why we got to continue to push that message to, right. to, to get it right and and and, and be uh, dot all our I's and cross all our T's. You know, we'll put you on the spot here a little bit and talk about personal conveyance, everybody's favorite um, 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 topic. And, you know, of course, we'll ask you to hang out a little bit and, and talk to anybody that has questions, but you talked about, you know, those uh, 15 minute increments and you make sure you're logging what you're doing. You know, you want to talk just a, a quick minute about just being careful how sometimes we misuse personal conveyance by mistake where we're going here and then, oh, we might as well fuel to and all of a sudden that PC move becomes an on duty move. Exactly. So, you can PC away from a customer, but if you end up at a truck stop and you get a washout PO or a fuel PO, that makes that movement uh, be required to be in drive status because those are both work-related activities for your job. You know, and, and that's kind of one of the, the, the basis behind, you know, as we, we, we talk about our PC pilot program, you know, not a lot of our drivers are doing things malicious, maliciously. You know, they're not doing any things to, to skate around the rules. I mean, we just sometimes make, make some mistakes, didn't know. So that's why it's important that we uh, that we make that call, send that message, let, let our night associates and data associates know exactly what we're doing so we can get that worked out. Exactly. We often get phone calls where someone has already left their customer, driven approximately an hour, and then they're requesting PC. And unfortunately, we can't access PC at that time because you've already started a drive segment and you can't switch to PC to keep from getting an hours of service violation. That retroactive PC. That retroactive PC. <laughs> it's like retroactive studying for a test in school. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if I'd known that was on a test, I would have studied for it, right? Exactly. All right. Well, good deal. Does anybody have any questions for Susan? She'll be hanging out here on the side. Thank you so much for coming up and being part of today's meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, what, what happened? We got a question. All right, sorry. There she goes. She's gonna she's gonna come over there and get you taken care of. All right, what we got next, John? We have got Colby and Rachel from our driver health and fitness department. I'm kind of nervous about if they're gonna pick on me or pick on you this morning. I'm gonna leave real quick. So they both of you. Come on. No, just kidding. Good morning, everybody. How are you? So I'm Colby with Driver Health and Fitness. Rachel's our on-site dietitian. Good morning. Um, every week we come in, we always have a health tip of some kind obviously this this month is sleep awareness month so we just want to make sure to give you another tip rachel's got something for you this morning yeah so if you guys are having any issues with sleep definitely come talk to us but a good rule of thumb is three two one so all you have to remember with that is three so three hours before bed you try to minimize how much you're eating especially try to do lower fat things that's really really going to help out with um reducing your core body temperature so anytime you're eating you're going to raise your core body temperature and we don't want your temperature high to sleep and that's not a good thing. It'll interrupt your sleep. So three uh, hours before bed, try to avoid eating. Two hours before bed, try to avoid drinking. Um, we all know what happens if you drink too close to bed. So obviously that's a big interruption. 
um, and then one hour before bed, really, really try to minimize light exposure. So take your phone, turn it on to dark mode, turn it on to night mode. Sometimes is what it's called. Try to avoid, um, you know, having really bright lights just in your surroundings. Try to dim anything you, that you can. So awesome. Yeah. So three, two, one. I like that because yep. every week or every time we've talked about, it, we kind of talk about like getting yourself. It's hard getting a routine, but like putting yourself to bed, doing those kinds of things. We do have on our podcast, our Healthier Highway podcast, we have an episode with Rachel and Cardinal Sleep. We talk about some healthy habits of sleep and sleep hygiene. So give that, guys, get that a listen. If you have any questions, Rachel and myself will be down here. Obviously, like I said, in all three locations, we have trainers for fitness and exercise, anything you need. But we're always here to help. And we didn't pick on either of you two. How's your sleep? There you go. Den Dennis ate before bed and didn't sleep well. That's what he said. Thank you, he guys. to sleep. But... <laughs> You know, I usually do the opposite of that. I usually eat a ton of food and then fall asleep. So, you know, uh, watched uh, um, um, who's at Oakland beat Kentucky last night yeah. in the NCAA tournament, and I was kind of dozing off. And it's like, I just better go to bed. I just... You know, I haven't done a bracket in like four years, and I think I was mathematically eliminated by about four o'clock yesterday afternoon. So, I, you know, I remember why? Start early. Start early. I, I remember you were filling out some bracket, but you was mistakenly looking at the women's bracket and not knowing who was who. And, you know, that's, that was a bad he sign wasn't from the beginning. Sense, so, yeah. Bad sign from the beginning. All right, who we got up next? Well, let's bring up Doug and Trent with our maintenance department here. Good morning, guys. Thank you. Morning, Prime. How are you today? A little bit of energy. Come on. You guys doing all right? All right. We got Trent Ferris here. You know, he, 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 sorry, he teaches our pro maintenance class. Uh, I'll let him pitch that, and he has some subjects to talk about. Uh, and then I'll finish it up where uh, I went with some of our operations folks and did a yard check and saw some trailers and stuff that, you know, I think we can do a lot better job as a group to make sure we're dropping good, clean trailers at these customers. So I'll touch on that a little bit, but Trent's going to cover uh, some pro maintenance stuff. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's springtime, thankfully. I think we're all really happy about that. Um, but, you know, looking backward at what, what the reefer's been going through the last few months, First of all, the reefer hasn't had to work really hard all winter long. If you have a 30 degree load and it's 20 degrees outside, your reefer really isn't doing much at all, right? It's just kind of collecting rent free. So um, come the springtime, uh, we're, we are gonna be using the reefer again for the, for the first real time in the last couple of months. But something else has been going on all winter long. You guys are driving around on those roads, you get your truck washed, 30 miles down the road again, your truck's gonna be dirty again because there's salt and sand and grime all over that road and it's getting on your truck right away. Well, it's also going into your reefer condenser. All winter long, your reefer condenser is slowly getting dirty and getting clogged up. And that reefer condenser is a really important part of the refrigeration system. That thing has to have air moving through it to remove heat out of the refrigeration. And if it can't move air through that condenser, then the refrigerant's gonna get too hot and it's gonna shut the reefer down. So the code that you're gonna see when you see this happen is gonna be high discharge temp. And when you see this code pop up, we probably don't need to go to a shop. There's something that you all can do to usually get the reefer running again, and, and that's all we need to take care of. So um, I've got a slide that I want to pop up. Oh, it's already up on the screen here. Uh, at the very top of your reefer unit, go back to that last um, picture, please. You can see a grill up there at the top of the reefer, and um, that's the area where the condenser is. So we just need to get that washed out. We need to get the condenser cleaned out so that it can start breathing again and, and moving air through it. Uh, to do that, we just need to spray some water up there. So if we go to the next slide now, um, I've got a picture of a garden hose that you can find at Walmart or Lowe's. These are, these are really easy to find. They're expandable garden hoses. They don't take a lot of space. They're relatively inexpensive. You can hook this garden hose up to any spigot at any fuel island at truck stops. And uh, now you've got a, a way to spray that condenser out. So all we need to do is just shoot some water up there where that grill is for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, you're just trying to wash all the dirt and grime out of that condenser so it starts moving air through it again. And like I said, nine times out of 10, that's, that's gonna be all it needs. So uh, a little tip for you all coming into the spring here, um, I can pretty well guarantee that probably half of the reefer drivers in the room here are gonna see this happen at some point. So um, you remember that when it, when it does pop up. Uh, you can also, anytime you see an issue on your reefer, 
for you know don't hesitate to get a hold of road assist that's what we're here for uh, i'm going to give you the advice that i just gave you and kind of remind you that this is what's going on so um remember that out there and and also remember that we teach a class every day here in springfield uh, we go over that about 20 or 30 other items in the class it's a couple hours long um, so if you uh, want to get some more maintenance knowledge and learn some more about the truck or, and trailer, then, then feel free to come in and do this class. We, we do it every day at 1 o'clock over at the Campus Inn. And then we also offer it now up in Pittston at 1 p.m. up there on Thursdays. So go check it out up there if you're up in Pittston. So thank you all. Pass it over to Doug. Yeah, no, that's great information. Make sure you take advantage of this class. We hear, hear great things about every driver. Is, even if you're an experienced driver, you'll learn something there. <clears throat> but I got a chance to go Wednesday. Uh, to Ohio to visit one of our customers and every time I get an opportunity to go to one of our customers I go to and I open all the doors you know I check out the reaper unit to make sure we're doing good pre-trip and post-trip inspections when we're dropping trailers at our customers and you know a lot of the trailers that I saw had a bunch of pallet debris uh, you know that needed to be swept out the chutes were hanging down you know so three of these trailers that I inspected were not going to be loaded so then you know we're just kind of spinning our wheels there uh, when, we're, when we're dropping trailers at, you know, a, a yard and, and, and they're not ready to load to our customers. So let's make sure, you know, we do pay you guys to take those trailers and get them repaired. <clears throat> we'll pay you to hang the chute. Uh, if the chute needs to be hung, that way it's ready to go to the customer. Uh, but what we saw was just, you know, some dirty trailers and, and chutes. I'm going to be calling. There's, there's a few drivers I'm going to be calling today. And, and I'm going to be calling their fleet manager to talk to them. Uh, because we identified who dropped those trailers and we're going to have some conversations with them to, to make sure it doesn't reoccur. But right now, the time to shine, you know, we need to put our best foot forward and, and make sure every trailer we're dropping at our shippers can get loaded and get moving. So let's make sure we make that commitment. I know you guys all understand that and how, and how important it is. Uh, but when we go out to these yards, we look and we inspect and, and we, we, we call those drivers out <clears throat> and have those conversations with them. So let's make sure we're doing everything we can. Go ahead, Charles. So, Doug, when you were looking at those, were those truly trailers that were dropped by a driver or those that were unloaded at the shipper and then left? Because a lot of times we'll drop something at a shipper and then they take that same trailer and then reload it. But it may have pallet debris and it. it may have a torn chute. And we never saw that because we dropped that at the shipper. Yeah, we, we verified. Okay. Our, yeah, drivers dropped them there. We, under, we understand the backside of it, too. But it was it was us. And then I have one other question going back to you talked about uh, Trent, you talked about spraying down the condenser on the reefer. A um, friend of mine just had their uh, APU serviced over Thermal King the other day and they uh, power washed the, uh, the APU when that was done. As it starts getting warmer, would you recommend us maybe spraying down the APU as well so that we can keep that um, APU working right as it gets hot? Yeah, great point. So um, your APU AC system hasn't been in use either for a few months now. So if you're turning that on for the first time and you see the AC not working, then then check that condenser fan, that fan right there on the back of the cab. That's the condenser for, for the APU. Make sure that fan is actually spinning. Sometimes debris gets caught in the fan and you've got to remove that debris out. Um, also, you know, the, the condenser back there can get clogged up. So that might also be an issue. Wash that out. Thank you. Yeah, make, make sure you're opening up those reefers. You know, pay attention to the bottom pan of that reefer. Uh, there was a trailer out there that we had loaded. You know, the customer did load it for us. And fuel was literally, you know, dripping out of that bottom pan. And somebody had put absorbent pads uh, on the bottom pan. So, I mean, it was leaking fuel so bad. Somebody had identified it. And we just still, we, we didn't get it fixed. So, let's make sure, you know, we're not our own worst enemies out there. And we're taking the time to get this stuff fixed. You know, we'll, we'll pay you to take it to get fixed. Dispatch will help you out. Uh, let, so just do everything we can right now in these times to get these clean, ready to go trailers for the, these customers to load. The worst thing we can do is give them a trailer that, it, that w they won't load. And then we have a trailer that we have to have another driver pull and we're just spinning our wheels. So let's make sure we're committed to that. And thank you all for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, question in Piston. Got a question in Piston. Don't go too far. Go yeah, ahead. I got a question here. Now you're asking us drivers to look into the reefer and the APUs because they haven't been used in months and they got salt and debris that's been building up. When we pull our cabs and trailers into the maintenance bay, are you adding that to their checklist so that they can be doing their part as well? Yes, we check every reefer as they come to the plaza. Yes, sir. Well, we do not that's check the good. APUs. That's up to the operators because it's a uh, uh, for operator comfort comfort. But as a company driver, I mean, am I expected to be handling that? 
you're expected to just inspect your APU, make sure it's operating. If it's not operating, uh, contact road assist. But yes, your requirements are the same as anyone else. Uh, they do a good pre-trip and post-trip inspection on all your equipment. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Before you guys get out of here, I got one more deal. You know, so sometimes up in that that uh, that reefer unit bird's nest. You know, you want to talk about that for just a quick second? Um, yeah, I mean, birds do happen. They they're out there. You might have a, a bird up there. Um, if that happens, then. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about it. We'll have to get that removed. Um, you may have to get to a shop to get the the, the bird nest out of there. Um, but just get a hold of Road Assist if you see that happen, and we'll deal with it. Yeah, we've had you know the, a bird, you know, builds a nest right there at the belts. You know, the, the, those belts spin, they get hot, and we've seen them those bird nests catch on fire. So especially you know, open those doors, make sure there's not some debris there, something rubbing those belts. Yeah, Very important that we you know do a just a common inspection. You don't have to know what a compressor is necessarily but if you see fluid pouring out of it or a big bird nest you know we need to do something about it thank you all right let's give a round of applause thanks guys all right so i'm gonna ask jerry young to start making his way up here jerry young's a, a, a fleet manager in our refrigerator division and anytime we do these meetings it's always an absolute jewel to have one of our fleet managers come in and speak uh the relationship between a driver and their fleet manager is probably the most key relationship here at prime you know the fleet manager has his or her hand in just about every part of you know the success and, and the failure of, uh, of an independent contractor and you know there's a ton of things that we can ask jared to speak about today but we're going to be focused specifically on cargo claims you know and we've had jeff chisholm and his team come up and we've had uh, Jim Guthrie, uh, Director of uh, Reefer Operations, come up and talk about what we can do for uh, to prevent cargo claims. But it takes a village to get these done, and we've we've talked about it from that perspective. But now we're going to talk about it from a from a fleet manager's fleet manager's perspective and what uh, the the tandem of driver and fleet manager can do to prevent those. Good morning, Jared. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I've got a lot to cover, so make some notes here. Make sure I don't miss anything. These um, cargo claims for the most part, are gonna be something that's preventable. And there are a lot of things that we can do at the point of where you're picking up your load and at the point when you're delivering your load that can help prevent these cargo claims just by dotting your I's and crossing your T's and making sure everything's taken care of. So the first thing is to inspect your bills of lading. When you get your bills of lading at your shipper, you gotta know what you get. And so when they hand you a pile of paperwork, don't grab it and head straight to the truck to make your, your depart macro and your live loaded call, inspect them real quick look at them and see if it's page six of six and that you have all six pages make sure that you have all of the po's that you're supposed to have each one of these bills of lading especially if you have a more complicated load if you've ever held one of those cost of farms loads that have all the nursery plants complicated bills of lading a lot of pod information on there so you've got to make sure you have all the information that you need so if you have three pages, make sure you have all three. If you have six pages, make sure you have all six. It may be 20 pages with 20 POs. Make sure that you get those things. Understand what a proof of delivery means, because without those things, if you don't have a proof of delivery, you can't get paid for the load. And so understand what it requires. Some customers are gonna have a stamp or a sticker. It might be a signature. You can't put on there for your proof of delivery that somebody scribbled, okay? You gotta have an actual proof of delivery on those bills of lading to help prevent those claims. When you get your paperwork back from your, from your receivers, you gotta make sure you inspect it. Make sure if you handed them six pages that you get six pages back. Understand that each place is going to have that different POD. So if you're at a place that requires the store number, a printed, sig a printed name and a signature, that you have all three of those. And if you have 20 POs, you're probably gonna need it done 20 times. And so understand that that proof of delivery is vital to make sure that you don't have a claim on the other end. These claims and those types of proof of delivery issues can really cause problems with billing the load out, which delays you getting paid. And so that's a big that's a big thing when you get to the end of payroll and you're looking for that load to be on your on your week, and it's not there because we don't have the proper POD or we're asking you on Tuesday or Wednesday to please rescan something. So make sure that you're checking the bills of lading when you pick up your load. Don't run straight to the truck, step to the side, make sure you have everything. 
when you get those bills of lading back at receivers, make sure you're inspecting them closely. Make sure you have the proof of delivery. Make sure you have all the pages. Make sure you scan them, okay? Have a good place in the truck where you keep your bills of lading safely for in transit, where you can get them quickly and easily, and to hold on to them in the truck for a while so that if you need to rescan something, that you can do that. All those things can help prevent delays getting you paid and help prevent getting claims done. Now, um, a couple of best practices too that'll help us too. Circling temperatures. When you get your bills of lading, you have those proof of delivery, things like that. Let's make sure we don't get a claim from temperature. Look closely for the temperature setting on the bills. Circle it. Know where you're delivering to. Verify that address. Go do that verification through your live loaded process and circle those addresses so that you know where you're going to and you know what the temperature is. So if anyone ever asks, hey, can you verify this temperature? You can. It, it can easily be found on the bills of lading and go straight to it. Uh, does anyone have any questions about any of this stuff? Hey, Jared, I, I do have a, a question for you. You're talking about our, our operators getting the bills at the origin point, and when we get to delivery, there might be four or five different bills, correct? With Correct. Could you, could you speak to that and, and what needs to be done as they deliver, um, and what should they do if there is a miscount or a shortage or a damage? Would you just touch on that, please? Absolutely. So you're going to have loads that are going to have some more complicated bills of lading setups or multiple deliveries. Okay. So if you're running into issues on any of those, one, you got to make sure the piece counts. You know, if if it's requiring a driver to count it, make sure you're on on the dot there counting it. Make sure that they sign for all the product that are on the bills of lading. So if there's any discrepancy whatsoever on any of those bills of lading, stop what you're doing. Call claims, do not leave the facility until you have some direction from claims. They may be able to resolve that issue right then and there on the spot with the customer. Maybe you're missing a PO on the bills of lading. We're able to get that PO number, issue a new set of bills to that customer and get that load delivered without you ever leaving the facility. Because leaving the facility a lot of times can cause the problem. So make sure you contact claims before leaving the facility. Hey, Jared, I'm looking at a question that's online. Um, I've done this ever since I've been at Prime, but he, the person is asking about the sticker that we get at Walmart that has all the trailer information and all that on it. Is that something we actually have to have, or, are we, or am I just doing that because I'm OCD on that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, you need it. <laughs> so the, the, the stickers, Walmart, most of the time you're going to have a trailer control report. They're going to use that. And, and, and so sometimes there's a, like a manifest report. If you get paperwork back, scan it. Get an image of everything, every sticker, every signature, every page of bills of lading, have an image of it, okay? That, that's one of the, the best things that we have now is that you don't have to run to a truck stop and wait in line and scan everything in. Your phone is right there. So the, you have the opportunity, as soon as you get your bills of lading, to take images, and you'll have a permanent image of those things, okay? And so when you get your bills of lading at the shipper, you can do it, and then you, you can do it again when you get your bills of lading back from the customers and, and you have those proof of deliveries. You'll always have a digital copy of those as well as your hard copy. Any other questions? Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> you know, we really appreciate Jared's time. You know, uh, Friday morning, you know, John, you know this, uh, former fleet manager, Friday morning it's probably the worst time that we can ask a fleet manager to come and, and, and spend time away from his fleet. He's putting together plans to get his guys taken care of for the weekend, but we appreciate your, your time to come and talk to us this morning. So, you know, I got, I got a few questions for folks today. All right. And, and these are our trick questions. So just to, to give you a heads up. So who likes roads, paid roads, raise your hand. Ambulance, fire support, national defense. We love all those things. All right. Right, so that means by default we love taxes, right? Not so much, not so much. But it is it is coming up on that time of year, so we're going to ask our, our, our friends from Abacus to come and talk to us about what, what we need to do to make sure that um, our bills are paid to take care of those things. Good morning, guys. Have you filed your taxes yet? I have. You have? Okay, good. I know I was here, I think it was like the beginning of February, and I asked, can I get a raise of hands if you filed your tax return yet this year? 
Hopefully I get a little bit more. Okay, quite quite a bit more this year, this time uh, than a month ago. Um, so as you guys know, the tax deadline is coming up April the 15th. Um, if you cannot file your tax return on time, you can get an automatic six month extension, but you do have to file for it. So that means that gives you all the way until October to file. So if you can't file on time, that's okay. Just file an extension by the deadline. There's no, generally you can get those filed pretty easily. And like I said, there's no requirement to ask for an extension. You don't have to give them a reason. Um, a couple things I just wanna get you guys aware of is there's a lot of scammers related to tax returns out there. Um, if you're getting your tax return filed, be really weary of a company that maybe just popped up out of nowhere. They're at a truck stop, they're like, oh, I can do your tax return for you. Um, and they're gonna charge you probably really little. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell your identity online, okay? So just be very careful about who you use as a tax preparer. There are a lot of good softwares out there, TurboTax, HR Block, they have a lot of you know, pretty secure stuff online. For those of you that are employees, you can get your tax returns prepared pretty cheaply. Also look out for tax preparers who want to take some of your refund for payment or advance on your refund. You need to keep as much of that money that's your hard earned money and keep it. Um, nine out of 10 refunds come within 21 days uh, from the time you file it if you're doing direct deposit. We all learned from COVID that if you do direct deposit for a refund, in case the government comes out with another stimulus payment, you're gonna get that faster than you would a check. So I do highly recommend that you do a direct deposit if you are gonna get a refund. If you do owe, it's also important that you're aware an extension to file in October that gives you that extra six months is an extension to file, not an extension to pay. Okay, that's a very misconception. It's like, oh, okay, so I don't have to file until October because I got an extension, so I don't have to pay. No, that's that's a that's it, not correct information. You still have to pay. Well, I have clients ask me all the time. Well, if if I don't have my tax return prepared, how how do I know what I'm supposed to pay? Well, if you're a self-employed individual, you're actually required to pay estimates on a quarterly basis. Sandy, can you talk about our estimates for a second? So estimates are actually due throughout the year. And as an owner operator or a lease driver, you are responsible to make quarterly payments. The IRS does require that. Um, by making those payments, you're actually prepaying your end of the year taxes, okay? And if you have a preparer who is actually doing estimates for you, if they're recommending an amount that you cannot pay, we do highly suggest that you make a payment. That will also help you to avoid any penalties for not filing or paying those uh, estimates. So um, that deadline also is coming up on April the 15th in, you know, in, in conjunction with your tax returns. So just know that it's not too late that if you haven't uh, had somebody signed up or having them prepare estimates for you, Abacus does have the opportunity to file those. And in some situations, we can also assist you to make those payments as well on a quarterly basis. Yeah, and um, so you are required to pay taxes on a quarterly basis. If you're an employee, your employer's paying it for you. If you're an employee at Prime, Prime's taking care of that for you. But if you're self-employed, you're actually required to do that. It's a half a percent penalty for not paying quarterly. That's 2% for the entire year. So your extension to pay is really that April deadline because the fourth quarter payment was due January the 15th. So like Sandy said, even if you can't pay the full amount, pay something towards that quarterly estimate to lower the amount of your penalty and make sure that you well less at the end of the year. Do you have any tax questions out here? All right, you're getting me off the hook. Okay, well, if you have any, we're upstairs. Come, Feel free to come talk to us. All right, thank you, guys. You know, I'll tell, I'll tell a quick horror story, and then we'll, we'll move on. You know, one of the, the most heartbreaking things that I've ever done as a fleet manager is get that message that driver John Doe has a levy you know, they haven't filed their taxes in a decade, and finally the, the government has caught up with them. So, you know, things happen. We get it. You know, don't ignore it. I promise you just because it's been six months, a year, two years, and you haven't heard anything or they haven't found you that they won't. I promise you they will. And when they find you, it's going to hurt. So do what's necessary. Um, if, you, if you need some, some help getting caught up or whatever the case may be, you know, if you don't want to use applicants, that's fine. Find a, a tax professional that you're comfortable with and get yourself taken care of because I promise you the government will find you and they want and they're going to get their money 
one way or another. Yes, they will. 100%. I hated getting those messages too, just heartbreaking, like you said. So, you know, we haven't talked a lot about the Prime app this morning, but, you know, the Prime app is a very vital tool to your business out there. If you guys have any questions, if you're here at the terminal, if you're one of the other terminals, Springfield specifically, we've got Richard over here and Carla hiding back there. So they are the experts. So any questions you have, please get with them after the meeting. They'll be happy to help. And then we're also going to honor our veterans here. So we've got red on, which stands for remember everyone deployed. We reddish. So red is remember everyone deployed. So we like to take a minute here. If you've served in our armed forces in any branch, please stand up. Let us recognize you for your services. Give you a round of applause. Kind of called me out on that, Dennis. So, you know, we're going to bring up Steve Lucky, our vice president of sales here. And, and one thing I just wanted to mention, we were talking about the safety vests earlier in our appearance. And, you know, you guys are our front line with the customers out there. And 20 years ago when I started here, I heard something that, that has stuck with me. And I really like the fact that that this was being promoted to the fleet of the fleet manager who was training me. But, you know, he had a tip, you know, go buy you a nice collared shirt. It's getting ready to be summertime. It's going to be hot. You know, hang that thing on a hanger in the bunk. And then before you go into a customer, throw it on, put your safety vest on. You know, you don't have that shirt. You just drove eight hours in, maybe going in there, probably got some mustard on it, maybe something like that. When you get done with your customer, get back to the truck, hang, put it back on the hanger, and it's there ready for you the next time. So that's just a little tip. So we're going to bring Steve up. Good morning, Steve. Hey, John. Thank you. Dennis, thank you, man. Good morning. So who you like in the tournament? Uh, it was Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's past tense. It was, huh? Yeah, this is a great time of year. Um, basketball, college basketball is a great time to, to uh, watch and kind of sort through it. Um, <clears throat> look, business is a little bit tough right now, and uh, we, need, we need to do a couple things. We need to do everything we can to squeeze out every penny possible in your operation, uh, whether that's fuel mileage or uh, staying out a little bit longer or whatever. Uh, the load count is up and down. It's kind of unpredictable on a weekly basis. I know you don't want to hear it, but it is what it is. We, we can't chase it away. We could load every truck in our fleet at 90 cents a mile. I don't think you're going to like that. So as we go through these bid processes with our major customers, we're putting in rates that are real, that will keep you whole, that will allow you to make a living. Um, these other non-asset bidders, brokers, they're going in low, going in low price. Now, the way this works is they may get the award for the business, but they're not gonna be able to serve that business at the price they quoted. So we may lose on the front end a substantial amount of business through a bid process. But what really happens is that will come back to prime because that shipper wants service. And at the rates that are being quoted, they're not going to get that service. So we just kind of have to bide our time a little bit, watch our growth, take care of business, no accidents, no claims. Just, just do your job as best you possibly can. Get an extra mile per gallon. Take that fuel surcharge money and, and use it in your best interest, okay? So we're going to get through this. It's a little bit tough, a little bit rocky, up and down. But the network is being purged. Every week we're seeing companies go out of business because they cannot make it in this environment. We have a very strong business model. We are going to be just fine. So just hang in there, be safe, pick them up and deliver them on time. You know, one thing that just came about here in the last couple of weeks, one of our very largest shipper um, doesn't like the way some of these trailers are specced out. They do not like the side chutes. You know, we have center chutes, right? That's the way we spec our equipment. Well, they've done some research and the majority of the claims that they're getting are being created by these side shoots. So they're saying no more side shoots. 
So the competition that has spec their equipment like that, they won't be handling the business for this particular shipper coming on the inbound side. So when we look at that, that's another very strong win for us. So as we've talked about, the maintenance of our equipment is really important. Take care of those chutes. Watch when they're being loaded and let's take care of them and repair them as we need them, okay, as we use them. Service comes in a lot of different ways, as was mentioned earlier. It's not just about being 100% on time. It is about the quality of the temperature, the product. It is about how you present yourself. It is about the paperwork, and it's not an easy job. You new folks coming into this business, it's more than just getting up there and hanging on to steering wheel. It is a real professional business, and it's dangerous too, and don't think it's not. You take your eyes off the road for just a second, and you get in trouble. You gotta be game ready. You gotta have your game face on when you get behind the wheel. We want you to protect yourself. We want you to be healthy. You know, we call this a safety meeting, but you heard from our health and wellness people. They want you to be healthy. Why? Because you're loved by many and you're safer when you're healthy. So we're gonna to continue to pursue those kinds of, of themes. We're blessed to have an owner that cares about our drivers and our associates and cares about the equipment that we have out there on the road. So. Just hang in there with us. We'll be just fine. I'm gonna bring up Robert Lowe here. I don't know who he picked in the NCAA tournament, but it could have been it was it could have been Kentucky. Kentucky. I'll tell you, it wasn't Kentucky. It you wasn't. know, I'm just gonna no, go no. out of limb. Everybody loves UConn, right? They're gonna be the one of the favorites for sure. I just think Purdue could be a sleeper. Anybody think Purdue could get it done? Yeah, they they could be pretty good. Anyway, that's my pick. Go ahead. It's all yours. He gave out the info, so now they're not a sleeper anymore. You're going to be expected to win it. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, folks, good to see you all. Steve covered a lot of territory there. He covered a lot of territory. And it's all, you know, very accurate and very appropriate. Uh, and I'm sure that that you'll uh, take heed of, of this information. This marketplace we're in is tough, but we got a we got a good team. We got a damn good team. We have good equipment. And even though it's slower, we haven't stopped buying. We haven't stopped buying because we like running new stuff. You know, let somebody else run that old stuff. And we sell stuff, our used stuff is better than a lot of people's best stuff. And we're going to keep that strategy. Cycle those trailers out when they get five, six years old, get them gone. Let the competition try to make a living with them. You know, new stuff doesn't break down. You have uptime, you're making money. Same with the power equipment. You know, I don't like old tractors. You know, some people, they say, I just want to get this thing paid for so I don't have that damn truck payment. I understand that. But in, you know, we've analyzed the heck out of this. That old stuff, you save enough money in your maintenance expense to run the new stuff to fade that new truck payment. I promise you, it works. So we're going to run new equipment. We're going to keep selling at good fair race that you can make a living at who wants to work for less i mean i don't see any hands go up on that deal i damn sure don't i don't think you do either so that's our strategy is simple the best drivers the best equipment and the best freight that's what we're all about god bless each of you please be safe